Hi everyone, uh, I'm Tracy Baker and this is Baker Gets Cooking. Today's episode is going to be slow cooker spaghetti and meatballs. And it's really a good one because you can make it ahead the night before and then the next morning put, start your slow cooker and then when you, get, when you get home from work, supper's ready. All you have to do is boil some noodles and that's it. So this is, a, this is prepping the sauce. This is um, a basic tomato sauce, uh, a marinara if you will. I don't have an Italian, what's Italian for grandma? Nona, I don't have an Italian Nona, so this might be not what it's supposed to be in Italy, but it works for my family and it appeals to kids and, and adults alike. So first, start out with an onion that's diced. There's a little bit of oil in the bottom of my pan and I'm just going to uh, continue dicing this half. Now my knife is a little bit dull so I kind of wanted to demonstrate how I sharpen my knives. Um, these are pretty good quality knives. They're Cutco knives. I've invested, I don't know, $600 in a set of them or something like that. Buy good quality knives. They'll last you forever and they stay sharper longer because uh, a dull knife is a dangerous knife so make sure your knives are sharp. This is a, uh, what's called a honing rod. Um, it is used, so it's a piece of steel that's used to kind of maintain the sharpness of your knives. If your knives are very dull, you have to get them professionally sharpened uh, by somebody who knows what they're doing, and then this will keep them sharp. If they get to a point where you can't sharpen them anymore, then they need to be, again, resharpened by a professional, and then you can maintain them with this. So, they need to be at about a 20 degree angle to the rod. I hold it like, like this, perpendicular. So if you, if you think, and I hope you guys can see this okay, this is a 90 degree angle to the rod. That's 45 and that's about 20. So you want to drag your knife along the length of the, the blade, keeping it at about a 20 degree angle on both sides. And you just need to do that a couple of times and that will have your knife sharpened. That's it. I remember my grandma, she would take it and she would like, go oh, like this. And it's like I was scared and stand back, grandma's got the knife. So I'll just wipe off any metal that's accumulated from that. And now I have a very sharp knife. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to dice this onion and get it cooking. Okay, so in the pot it goes. I'm just going to turn this down a tad. Okay, and we're not going to brown these onions, we're just going to soften them. So just, you know, 10 minutes till they're translucent. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, about like a quarter teaspoon of salt. A little bit of pepper, with my awesome pepper mill. And I'll give them a stir. Okay, so you just let those go until they are translucent. That doesn't take very long. And then we'll put the rest of the tomato sauce together. Now the onions have been uh, sa sauteing for, oh, I don't know, a couple of minutes and they're starting to get translucent. And I'm just gonna grate, this is a micro grater. I'm just gonna grate in three cloves of garlic. You don't wanna put your garlic in um, at the, when you put your onions in because it will burn and it gets really bitter and tastes terrible when it burns. So you want to just put it in when the onions are almost done. Whoops, there's a big chunk of it there. And then just cook them a little bit. I think it's important to saute the onions before you add it to the sauce. Even though it's going to be cooking for, you know, six hours or so, uh, you need to cook the onions first because the acid in the tomatoes will sometimes prevent the onions from cooking and they'll be crunchy even after they've cooked for, you know, six hours or so. So while that's finishing up, I'm just going to turn it down to just to low. I'm going to get started on my sauce, the tomato sauce. So I do mix it right in the slow cooker. This is my slow cooker. It's not pretty. Uh, I think I got it as a wedding present, so it's 21 years old. Um, but it still works really well and it's huge. It holds a lot, so that's why I like it. When it dies, I'll maybe get one of those beautiful stainless steel ones. But for right now, it works perfectly fine. So I have two 26-ounce cans of 
plum tomatoes. So I'm going to put those right in the pot. And then I'm going to use my immersion blender. I use this guy a lot. They're really inexpensive now. You could probably get one for, oh, I don't know, around 20, 30 bucks maybe. It came to our marriage with my husband, and I use it uh, a lot. It works really well. So I'm just going to uh, puree these tomatoes, and, uh, and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. And then I have two 398 ml cans of tomato sauce. So you can read the labels of your ingredients and make sure that they don't have any nasty additives. Like sometimes they'll add uh, preservative and stuff like that to their to canned goods. So just make sure you buy a good quality one that doesn't have any of that junk in it. You just want the, the fruit or the vegetables and that's it. Okay, so that's fine for now. We're going to finish here. I'm going to just turn the heat up a tad. And we're going to add to the saucepan a 6 ounce can of tomato paste. And I'm just going to cook that a little bit. Cooking it just kind of takes the raw flavor out of it and uh, makes it taste a little bit better. It doesn't take long, so you just want to saute this with the onions until the tomato sauce starts turning a little bit darker. So we'll just go ahead and stir that around. Mix it with the, uh, the onions. And just let it cook for a couple minutes. I think that's about got it. So then I'm just going to turn the heat off and I'm going to add to the saucepan three quarters of a cup of a good dry red wine. Uh, choose a wine that you would drink. Don't choose anything like a cooking wine or anything like that because it, it just makes your food taste terrible. Because you, If you wouldn't drink it, then you don't use it in your cooking. This is an Okanagan red wine that we really like, Canadian Okanagan. There's lots to choose from these days. They've done such a good job of developing that wine country in the Okanagan in Canada. And now they make really, really good red and white wine. Okay, so we're just going to combine that and then that's going to go right into the pot. In here I have a teaspoon of basil, dried basil, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a teaspoon of dried rosemary, a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of sugar. Let me see if that's all. Oh, and a little bit of pepper flakes, so red pepper flakes, like a quarter teaspoon. Okay, so that's all going to go in the pot, and I'm just going to stir it, stir it up. Okay, so we'll just combine that. Now, the, what I like about this recipe is that it makes an absolute gallon of sauce, literally, it's about a gallon, and you prepare it the night before you want to eat it. So from here I'm going to just put the lid on this crock pot and put the, the insert, so I'll take it out of the pot like that. I'm going to put the insert in my fridge downstairs and it's just going to sit in the fridge overnight. Tomorrow I'm going to take it out of the fridge for about an hour and let it come to kind of room temperature, let it warm up a little bit. You can do it all day. I've done it uh, for, you know, when I go to work, I've done it, set it in the morning and then eaten it that night. That works well too. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to be at home, so we'll just, I'll do it for about six hours. This, it's a, it's such a huge batch that it feeds probably, I would, I would think this could feed almost 15 people. Like it makes, seriously, almost a gallon of sauce, but it's really good and it freezes excellent. So I divide it up into smaller portions and put it in the freezer and when I need a quick meal with an awesome sauce, I've got it. That's how, what makes my life easy. Okay, so we'll see you in the morning. Hi everyone, we're back. It's about 12 o'clock afternoon and I'm going to put in here, about two dozen ready-made meatballs. You can make your own. Maybe that's another segment for the future. Or buy them. I've done that. You know, you do what you, what you have to do to make uh, your life simple. 
So I'm going to put it in the crock pot on high for about five hours. You can do this first thing in the morning, say you're going to leave to go to work. You can do it first thing in the morning, put it on low for about 12. So we'll be back and we'll cook some pasta and put some sauce on the pasta. We're back and it's just about supper time. So I have uh, cooked about 900 grams of white pasta in lots of water with a lot of salt in it. So you want your pasta water to be fairly salty. It needs to taste like, well they say, the Italians say it needs to taste like the sea. So that's uh, uh, probably more salt than what you're, you are used to putting in there. So I, I taste my water and if it tastes like uh, sea salt, sea water to me, then it's, it's good. And it adds a lot of flavor to your pasta. So uh, I have a lot of pasta I'm feeding uh, my family of five, and I'm, I hope to have leftovers, but they really like pasta, so I may not have too many. So we're just finishing off, getting ready to sit down at the table. There's plain pasta in the pot here, and I'm going to just put it on the burner with some sauce. Now this is how you should finish off your El Dante pasta. So take it out of the water when it still has a little bit of crunch inside of it, and then you need to put some sauce back on it, and finish it off on a high heat for a couple of minutes. And that makes this, the, the sauce go right inside the pasta and it makes it taste really good. It's a little secret, Italian secret. I'm just going to put the sauce on right now. I'm not putting any meatballs on at this point. I don't want that spoon. I want this spoon. So I'm just going to stir that around a little bit. So you just need about five minutes on a high heat with plenty of sauce. You want it to be coated, but not so sopping, right? It's not about the sauce, it's about the pasta. I think I'm going to put a little bit more sauce on there. Now I don't put the meatballs in at this point because um, the stirring of the pasta can break the meatballs up. So. I'll put that in right at, I'll put them in right at the end. That looks like a good amount of sauce to me. And we'll just stir that up again. And it's just about ready. I'll take this off the burner. Just gonna put this aside. Okay, now I'm gonna add the meatballs with my slotted spoon. I'm going to leave the rest of the sauce in the pot because there's plenty of sauce here to freeze for another meal. Okay. I prefer to freeze the sauce without meatballs. It just, um, sometimes the freezing and thawing can break the meatballs up. So I freeze the sauce with no meatballs in it and then I, when I unthaw it, then I would add you know, another 24 or 30 meatballs to that. This, I hope, will feed my family for a couple of meals, and then I'll get a third meal out of, out of it in the future sometime. And there you have it. Looks awesome. Mm. Smells really good. My family likes to have a little bit of cracked, freshly ground pepper on their pasta. And a little Parmesan cheese. And I'm just going to have a little taste here let you know how things are smoking hot really good hope you like this episode I hope you like this recipe um, please subscribe and comment the recipe will be posted on my blog at Baker gets cooking blogspot and we'll see you next time. Bye.